Here at Hollander, we manufacture in the order of 6,000 to 7,000 fittings per day. But we also fabricate and assemble about 30,000 linear feet of what we call architectural railing. The processes involved in attaching posts to rails is common, whether for industrial or architectural railing. And this video will explain how we do these processes at Hollander. As a general note, we are using for the purposes of this video, one and a half inch IPS pipe. Uh, some of our customers use one and a quarter inch as well. In the first step, we assume your uh, pipe will come and cut the length. The second major process involves drilling holes in the pipe. We started off several years ago with what we call a gang drill, which was a 24 foot long device set up to handle long pieces of pipe. All locating and drilling was manual. As our railing business grew, we developed both a CNC railing, railing hole drill for lengths of pipe up to 24 foot long, and what we call a CNC post hole drill for a pipe up to 48 inches long. We are showing this uh, post hole in this drill in this particular shot. We've had this post hole drill for less than a year, but it has improved our productivity dramatically. In this shot, our shop technician inputs coordinates and then lets the machine do its job. Note how this machine both drills holes and then rotates the pipe as required to drill holes in a different plane. Again, the holes are 27 64th uh, inch. In this case, drilling two holes took approximately 20 seconds. For lower production hole drilling, uh, we've often recommended this in the past. We don't do it in the shop, but we have provided this jig to certain of our customers. In this case, we take two Hollander uh, 52E flanges and a track, and we'll put holes. Uh, in this particular shot, it shows only in the top. We would also put one in the side because you're gonna have to have holes in the two different planes. This is our uh, production bench, uh, as we would probably set it up uh, for small sections. Note how on the right-hand side, is the finished component and on the left hand side are the components we would want to make up that assembly. The next step involves uh, inserting uh, the rivet cert and the socket head cap screw. We insert the 5 dash 18 rivet nut with a special tool called a rivet set tool. This is a FAR model KJ45 with a 5 dash 18 mandrel. Uh, ballpark cost in this is around $2,500. These shots show how the rivet set tool will actually crimp the rivet nut. This is what the installed rivet nut looks like. Note how the rivet nut gives much more thread interface for the socket head cap screw. We then attach the 155T with a socket head cap screw using a lighter duty battery powered torque wrench. We tighten the socket head cap screw to 16 foot pounds. This shows the 130 elbow being inserted into the end of the pipe with the holes aligning. In general, we'll assemble our railing in an upside down position on the assembly rack shown. For obvious reasons, the holes and the tools are much easier to get to in this position. The next step is installing the set screws that are installed to spread the tangs, the internal tangs of the elbows and T's against the ID of the pipe. This is a 3 8 16 by one and a quarter inch set screw. We tighten this to 22 to 28 foot pounds. Uh, because of the higher torque required, we will use a uh, air power torque wrench. We find it faster in this particular application. This particular model is an Ingersoll 2135 QTI but any similar uh, production type impact tool will be fine. Some additional ideas here that have helped us. Again, we uh, will typically assemble the railing upside down, as shown. Sometimes uh, there will be some gaps between the pipe, uh, and we'll use a rubber mallet in cases where the aluminum rail is gapped a bit with the TR elbow. In summary, we hope this video will provide some ideas to those of our customers who want to improve their production processes uh, involved in the fabrication of Hollander internal rail components. Thank you.